In my experiences talking with luthiers who have made the jump to milling on the CNC, I've encountered a lot of trepidation regarding alignment with two-sided milling. Luckily, it's a lot easier than you think, and I'm gonna show you how. In order to effectively flip mill, we're concerned with two out of three of our available axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. If I'm carving a neck on my machine, I set it up so the longest dimension lies across the x-axis. I've cut a line into the baseboard at exactly 250 millimeters from the machine's home position along the y-axis and 20 millimeters along the x-axis for my work zero. This is where the neck blank starts and I tape down a block of MDF there. I'll show you why in a minute. Let me grab a neck blank and I'll take you through my process. I'll also show you my order of operations when neck carving because I wish someone showed that to me when I was just starting out. Hopefully if you're new to CNC, this might give you a little bit of help. In order for flip milling to work, you have to start off from a very accurate and precise center line. I'm using a centering ruler here and a very accurate Incra pencil to mark out my centers on the top of the workpiece. Then I get my square and reflect it across both ends. The next step is to join those lines that we've made at each end across the top and the bottom of the workpiece. The last thing I check is the width of the workpiece. For my neck blanks, I like to work at around 21 millimeters to 21 and a half millimeters. And that's exactly where we are. Just tightening up the clamps now on my new Blue Carve Turbo CNC. The center line on our workpiece is aligned perfectly with the center line on the baseboard of the CNC machine. It's not very clear here, so let's just flip it around and take a look from the other side. Yep, that's much better.
those are all the finished operations on the face of our neck. Before I can flip it over though, I've got to give it a quick clean up so that there's a nice, clean, even surface for the neck to turn over onto. All cleaned up and I'm pushing the neck blank hard up against that MDF block and aligning it along the center line on the baseboard. I just want to take a second to say hi and thank you to all of my new subscribers. There are a few hundred more of you than there were when I last uploaded a video and I just think that's fantastic so thanks very much. You're all obviously very very cool people. Having a look at this neck we can see that it's a little bit rough along the back and I did that by choice. As you become more au fait with the process of CAD and CAM design and also working on the CNC, you're better placed to make allowances for when to take a workpiece off the machine and finish it off by hand, which is what I'm doing here. It is possible to get an almost perfect surface off the CNC the trade-off is that you'll be sitting there all day waiting for it to finish so sometimes it's a good idea to just whip it off there go with a less intensive toolpath and then clean it up with whatever it is that you use to do your finishing with So that's my process. Now the neck is ready for finish sanding by hand. Hopefully you can see with the right preparation that flip milling doesn't have to be scary at all. As always, I hope you got something out of this video and I hope to see you soon.